A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <laughs> video! Today, once again, elementary geometry construction and this time a very cool one which I've been waiting to do here on this channel for one and a half years by now and it's the last time I really looked into the topic but I still should be able to construct the thing. It's the so-called Kepler right triangle. Last time around we have constructed ourselves a length of golden ratio. This is the piss golden line that you can see here. Far, okay, golden ratio. And today we want to construct ourselves a sacred triangle. It's said that uh, pyramids, the great ones, not the small ones, the great ones. Are there small ones? I don't know. The Louvre maybe. <laughs> I don't really give a shit. Have been constructed in terms of a Keplerite triangle. If you take the median and then do all this weird esoteric stuff that no one cares about and this absolute bullshit because pop culture mathematics. But the Keplerite triangle comes with many cool properties and it has been defined very easily. The hypotenuse is equal to the golden ratio of Fa and one of the side lengths that you got is equal to one. Yeah, so one next to the right angle, one of the cafetes. And this is how it has been constructed. Meaning the Keplerite triangle looks something like that. So we got Fa here, we got side length of one here and also we got an unknown side length here that we need to find out during the construction. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Give it a shot for yourself. By the way, have you checked out my second channel, Flemmy Swood already? Check it out, posting regularly over there. And now we are going to dive right in. So how would you go about constructing a triangle like this? I'm actually going to show you two ways today. One using the S theorem, ASS. <laughs> I made a video on that, linked on the description or up here in the info box. And the other one is by creating basically a golden rectangle. It's a very cool construction and it's a bit fiddly, but it's a lot of fun. And how would you go about constructing yourself this triangle? Actually, we could be cheating since we have created and I only noticed this now while looking at the sketch. I didn't notice this before. Cool thing about this construction is that we already have the unit side length one here and the side length of fa here. So what we could actually do, I didn't notice this before. This takes away the, the whole video. What we could do is we could grab ourselves the side length fa, golden ratio. Um, I need to reset the compass a tiny little bit. Moving blackboard, you are so annoying as frick. So gotta rearrange it a tiny little bit. And now what we could do is we could use this as a radius to create ourselves an arch. And now we are already done. Yeah, that, that was actually a real cheat. I didn't notice this before. This would be one of the ways to create yourselves a Kepler right triangle already. But I would like to go through the main raw construction under the condition that you have a side length of golden ratio given. This right here is golden ratio and that's what right here is x. We are going to talk about what x is in a second. And using the S theorem. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a unit side length and this unit side length is down here already. So what we are just going to do is we are going to take ourselves a big line segment which is of arbitrary length and now we are going to take the end point and we are going to mark ourselves what this unit side length is on our compass and then we are going to make a little mark with the compass on our line segment, meaning we are going to copy the length of the line here a tiny little bit. Um, that was the wrong side of the neodymium magnet. And now I mess that one up as always. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Unit side length, awesome. We are going to punch our needle, non-existent needle into here. And et voila, this right here is the unit side length. Now, what we also need is a right angle. How would you get yourself a right angle? To get yourself the right angle, we need to put a bisector onto it, but we need to preserve the side length of one here. So what we are going to do is we are going to double our side length one at very first, okay? And this is actually very easy by just dragging this over here. And by coincidence, that's basically already as long as it must be. And you can extend it using your straight edge. And now we are good to go um, bisecting our line. How are you going to bisect the line? Just remember, we are going to set our compass to be a bit longer than half of our side length. And then we are going to make a bunch of marks. 
and this is very easy to do. Let me just set up my compass as always. It just takes a while because um, that's a very annoying procedure and very comical. Yes, that is very comical. That is that is comedy gold what I'm presenting here. My goodness, is that annoying. Um, okay, uh, mark here, mark here. Put it over here. Okay, other boy, other boy. We can do it. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, nice. And now what we got is a bisector, which is perpendicular to our line segment. And since it cuts the whole thing in half, and you see it's pretty much accurate because of our first mark that we got here by coincidence, we still preserve this line segment one, and now we have this slide. Now what we are going to do to get ourselves the S theorem, ASS, is we are going to extend this line segment. And in a normal case, in schools, they are going to tell you that something like this doesn't exist. So you have a side given another side and an angle opposite of one of the sides. And it's not uniquely constructible by any of the congruence theorems, but they are lying to you as mentioned before in the S video. <laughs> um, as long as the longer line of the two is opposite of the given angle, it's actually constructible. And I'm going to show you that it's uniquely constructible by just doing it. What we're going to do is we're going to dial our length of the Gordon ratio far in real quick. And once we are done with that, we are going to create ourselves a spicy arc, which is going to pass our line. And then we are done. Then we are done. We are getting ourselves a Kepler triangle, Keplerite triangle. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that freaking amazing? My dudes and dudettes, let us connect these bitches. And then we are done. Perfect. This right here is the golden ratio of far. This has side length one, unit side length, and this right here is x. Now, now we have done it without cheating. And basically, this wasn't a cheating way because this was the same procedure. Side length far, extending this, just drawing this arc, and then we are basically done. Now, what is x right here? Let us take a look. That's the right triangle at Papa Pythagoras. We know by Papa Pythagoras that phi squared minus one is equal to x squared, basically. Meaning x is the same as the square root of phi squared minus one. But we know what phi is, don't forget. Phi is the same as one plus square root of phi over two, but the whole thing squared minus one. Now, if we were to square this, then we are going to get the square root of, and then we are going to get one plus, um, square root of five squared is five, plus uh, two times square root of five, and then divided by four minus one, but it's the same as four over four. Meaning if we were to compute this, we are going to get, okay, um, square root of, so we got something divided by four, now we get one plus five is six, minus four is going to give us two, Man plus two times the square root of five. We are going to factor out the two, Getting rid of it, dividing it by four, gives us two down here, giving us overall the square root of one plus square root of five over two. Hey, x is equal to, that right here is the golden ratio, is equal to the square root of five. Meaning, one cool property of the Kepler-Wright triangle, we are going to get into more properties in the game in later videos, is that Papa Pythagoras actually satisfies the polynomial equation of the golden ratio, namely phi squared, so hypotenuse squared is equal to um, phi plus one. Yeah, this right here is just a polynomial equation which satisfies um, the golden ratio of phi and its stupid little brother as the unique solutions. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's a cool property, I suppose. That is the first construction using the S theorem, but there is another construction, getting yourselves um, or taking yourselves just a golden rectangle. And that's a bit more complicated, haven't done this in a while, and actually I fixed the back one in place such that I can draw without any disturbances. Um, Disturbances? Yeah, I don't want to be disturbed. Now, I'm going to just draw a unit side length once again. This right here has length one. And what we are going to do with this unit side length is we are going to bisect it such that we are going to get a perpendicular line to it. Um, okay, same procedure as always. We are going to dial more than half of the line into our compass. And once we are done with that, we can start creating marks like this and like this on one side. And uh, that's good here. Let us repeat this process here. Okay, and now this line segment is gonna be perpendicular. 
and it's going to half our line. Okay, I'm only going to draw it to the left hand side because this is the only one that is really important to us. Can I please? Yeah, perfect. Okay, don't forget this right here is 90 degrees and so on. Now, how can you continue from this point onwards? What would you do? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the unit side length onto this length, meaning we're going to make it a bit shorter. This was just a dummy line. You could say, okay, let us extend our compass a tiny little bit. Um, this is going to take a second. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Okay, perfect. And we are going to shorten this side length. Is this now dialed in properly? I don't think so. I think my compass messed it up a little bit. Oh, this is so retarded. Okay, perfect. Now we have dialed it in. I made the mark here. I'm going to get rid of this little part. Meaning this right here is now length one. And now we are going to make two things. We are going to do two things. Namely, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to copy the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is going to appear here, meaning I'm going to dial this length into our compass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a big circle desu. It's going to touch up here at unit length one. Let me see for a second. So like this and also down here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also bring this mark over here. This is going to be important later. Remember this mark. As mentioned before, this construction is a bit more fiddly, but it's, it's a cool construction. It's a cool construction. So don't forget, this right here has length one. This right here is length one half since we have put a bisector into it. And now what we are going to do is we are going to extend this line segment to be double its size, meaning we're going to make it a double unit side length. So length of two units, you could say, obviously. <laughs> meaning we are going to um, just bring this down a tiny little bit. And we are going to double the side length. Now I'm going to extend this line. The proper way would be to extend this line at first and make a mark and then you have an intersection of two things. But this right here is an equivalent approach. I'm just mentioning this because I got a comment doubting this method in the last video. Just so we are clear. And now after doubling the side length, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bisect it once again, getting ourselves a perpendicular. Meaning I'm going to make this longer than half our side length. Okay, perfect, like this. Putting it into here. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. Now we got this intersection and now we get something cool out of that. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to connect um, our arch that we have up here, our circle part with this perpendicular. And also we are going to let our perpendicular run up until we meet this part right here, this line that we have created previously. And now you can prove this very easily. Um, obviously it's going to work out. You can just prove this by angles. If we were to connect this dot to the point where our first line, our unit side length meets the arch or arc of the circle, we are going to get a right angle here. This is something you can easily prove because you also have a right angle here. This just happens due to this triangle that we get right here, which, a project, which is a projection of this triangle that we are going to get up here. Now, don't forget this right here is side length one, but what is this side length that we got right here? This big fat boy. I mean, this right here is one half, but what is A, you could say, this part that we have have up here. Let us go through a tiny little bit of mathematics. And instead of looking at our A, what we can also do is since A is just the radius of the circle, we can go down here and see that this side length right here of the triangle, this hypotenuse is also A. Meaning this part right here is one half the side length. This right here is one. Meaning A is equal to the square root of um, one plus one half squared. Or in other words, by Papa Pythagoras or just straight up calculations, we are going to get that this is the square root of one plus one quarter. And this is four over four plus one quarter, which is the square root of five over four. Or in other words, that is the square root of five over two. So this whole side length that we got right here, a plus one half, is one half plus square root of five over two, which is one plus square root of five over two, 
which is going to be the golden ratio. So this side length right here, that's actually a side length of a golden rectangle. So this right here has unit length one. This is far golden ratio. And if you expand this into um, a rectangle, it's the so-called golden rectangle. This side length right here is actually equal to the golden ratio far. And now we are at a point where we can create ourselves a Kepler right triangle. How would you do that? Well, this is fairly easy because now we have our compass and we can dial in the side length of far and now we can extend it down here. We can draw ourselves an arch which goes like this. And the last thing to do is to extend our line segment that we got right here. Okay, this was just the unit side length. We are going to extend it. And now we are going to connect our dot that we have down here with the arch of the circle since the radius was far. This right here is also going to be far. This part right here is one. And this part here, since the Kepler right triangle is uniquely defined, like we did up here, is going to give us the square root of far. And that is a cool construction that we got right here because if you got yourself another triangle here, you're going to get something of this sort. Okay, this construction, this right here is far, this is also far, this is the square root of far, this right here is one, you can calculate what this side length is. And this is one of the properties of an so-called automedian triangle, which the Keplerite triangle is. You might notice this one. This looks like the um, visualization of the AMGM HM inequality, which is pretty cool. And we're going to get into more detail about this in a later video. But this is how you can construct a Keplerite triangle in two different ways. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more elementary geometry, algebra, golden ratio, and all this cool stuff, fractals, then why not make sure to take a look at the content of today's sponsor, Brain, who we cannot sponsor yet in our video here on this channel. Now that was a lot of fun, at least in my opinion, and I hope you did enjoy it too. And if you're a sucker for visualizations, drawing stuff, graphics, geometry, and all of the cool things that we did here today, then Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. Brilliant is your source for some of the best online learning platform that you can find out there on the internet. It's highly interactive and they have s nearly 70 courses in all topics STEM. So if you want to learn something about the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, no matter what it is, you name it, in the STEM field, it's there on the website. They definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And I myself am an avid brilliant user. I'm using it on a regular, weekly basis, that is, to learn new things on my own or for my own um, enjoyment, you could say, or to present proofs and visuals in my class. Since it's so highly interactive, even though the website is in English, it really doesn't matter to my German students because I can just show them the visuals and the visual proofs and it will still make sense to them, which is cool, getting rid of the language barrier by just showing them the visual stuff and all the highly interactive things and it's just going to make a lot of sense to them. Especially the, the proofs in the geometry section, things that we did here today on triangles, give such huge enjoyment to my classes and just make it so much more dynamic that I also find this to be a great resource for teachers. So if you are a teacher like me, or maybe you are just a student who wants to brush up on stuff that they already learned, or maybe on topics that you are soon going to have, then Brilliant is definitely the perfect fit for you. And you should check it out by using the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash maths. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already. But more importantly, the first 20 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is just great in general because they are adding new content on a regular basis and brushing up on all content to make it even better even though there's not much to make better because it's already borderline perfect in my opinion what they are delivering so definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and this concludes today's video don't forget to also check out Flemish Wood and Stemmage.eu my shop for handcrafted products and until next video I wish you guys an L day see ya